you know, usually when I get tutorials with them, they're quick, so they're too fast to okay. follow. So. But I'll pull you aside from Absolutely. So, today what I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to walk you through APA Style Central, which is, like I said, the program that the library strongly recommends you use to write your papers in. What, you, what it does is you create an account, you fill in the information, and it formats your paper for you. I'm going to be demoing this quickly for you today, but at the end of the session, I will gladly give you all my email. And if you'd like a private tutorial, if you want me to walk you through the steps of creating an account or walk you through doing a paper for the first time, I would be more than happy to. But let's take a step back first. Let's talk about APA. I feel like people hear that sometimes and get stressed out by what that means, right? It's a little bit overwhelming, am I, am I right? But I just want to say, APA is simply a style guide. It tells you what your paper needs to look like. So I'm sure you all know your paper needs to be written Times New Roman, size 12 font. It needs to be double spaced, one inch, one inch margins all around. And each paragraph you write needs to be indented. Okay? It's not meant to be scary, it's just meant for uniformity. So all of your papers look the same, and that, so your, your professors have the same criteria in grading. It's really not meant to be something overwhelming, it's just meant to be a style guide. So I want you guys to have that in the back of your mind while I'm doing all of this. Um, okay, so. We do have additional resources other than APA Style Central, which I'm also gonna go over. But we, the library staff, are very fond of APA Style Central. I personally use it for myself, for the classes I take. So it's not just a thing that the library has, a resource the library has. It's something that I feel strongly about, personally. So to get to APA Style Central, there is a link on your Blackboard account that should say um, APA Resources, and that'll bring you here as well. But you can also get to it by going to the library's homepage and clicking on APA Style Central. And I'm just going to go to Welcome and log in. screen here. Oops. There are a couple tabs here. The most important one is the sorry, uh, the most important tab is the write tab here. This is where you're gonna write your papers. Sometimes students get a little confused when they see the green research tab. The research tab is where your references are stored. That's not where you're gonna be doing your research for your papers. For research for your papers, you're going to, go to want to go to the library's homepage and use the materials on that site. The re research is just to store your references. Kenya? Yes. If they log in way back mm -hmm. with one account yep. and then they try to create another account, you worked with me on the chat. Mm -hmm. I was the one that you sent the 800 number to. Okay. I had started way back and I did one account. When I started my, that, my master's there, I did another account. They don't merge together. The guy merged my two accounts together. Good. That's great that he was able to help you. Right. But um, that's, so that's something for them to know. Okay. So we, we recommend when you create an account for the first time, choose your Goodwin email. That's what I did you this had done. time. But okay. the first time, you used a first popular time. way back okay. when, when you guys first opened. Yep. We didn't do that. We used our personal, personal. emails, okay. which it kept throwing me back and forth between the two. Oh, very strange. Yeah. Um, so yes, we recommend that you use your Google email to create an account. Um, you absolutely can use your personal, but when I'm helping a student, I always ask them, no, you know, did you use your Google email? Just because it's just easier for us to, you know, prompt. Um, I'm glad that you had success when you called them. Um, this is a product that's outside of, not outside of Google control. This is a, um, a program that we don't have the back end access to. Right. 
So that was the problem you ran across, and I'm really glad they're able to help you. I've heard good things about calling their 1-800 number. Um, but yes, it's important to use one email and be consistent um, when creating the account. But I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm glad that they were able to help you. I've heard good things about them. Yeah, they were very nice. So this orange tab is where you're going to actually write your papers. So I'm going to click on that. If you're working on a paper, you can go to my papers. But for the sake of this, I'm going to go to write a new paper and show you the steps you would take to write a new paper. It's going to ask you for a, te um, a template that you know you need to fill out. I always tell students use the basic paper unless otherwise indicated by their professor. The basic paper has all the components you need, and if you need to add additional pieces to the paper, you can do that for basic paper as well. So this is where you would add a paper title. Sometimes students get overwhelmed at this point, you know, look, I don't have my paper title yet. That's okay, you can always go back and edit it. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit start writing. So now, this is where you're gonna start and finish your paper. We strongly recommend that you start your paper in APA Style Central and finish it on APA Style Central. We have students who will go in between Word and APA Style Central, but the problem with that is, is it takes the formatting from Word and it doesn't mix well with this formatting. So sometimes you'll lose some of the proper APA formatting techniques, such as, you know, first paragraph indented, uh, excuse me, new paragraph indented. Sometimes it'll mess up your spacing. So it's really important that this is where you start and where you finish your paper. Over here, it has some different formatting things, just like Word. I like to tell students that it kind of reminds me of Blackboard meets, meets Word. That's what this reminds me of. So it has an ABC button, so it has spell check. The trick is that it does not automatically do spell check. You need to hit the ABC button. Some students forget about that. So you'd hit ABC and then it would find the, the spelling errors, just like in Word. Now, over here on the left-hand side, to fill out the formatting, you need to follow this t these tabs down here. Yes. So I was on, oops, I was on body, so this is the body of my paper, and to get to the title page, I simply clicked title page right here. Yep. And then you just need to fill out the required fields. The running head is just an abbreviated version of your title. In this case, since my paper is, my title is so short, I'm just gonna do, sorry. I'm just going to do the same title. Okay. The date, choose the date in which the paper is due. Professor. Underneath here, it gives you examples. So it says Professor Jane Smith or Dr. Charles Kim. So it gives you examples of what you know you would want to put in this particular field. So let's do it. First number. And it does the same underneath here. It gives you an example of what it should look like. So now I'm going to hit save and continue to authors. One of the common things people forget to include in their paper is their name. So it's important to make sure you fill out the author, author information since you are all the authors of your paper. and then you're going to fill out your affiliation, which is Goodwin College. Okay. And then you're going to hit Save to Author List. Now where do you find that? 
So you don't have to retype that in again. Where is that? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Over I here on the right hand side. When you write a new paper. When you write, when a, new you write a new paper, it doesn't we were save your author. It doesn't Who's save it to the right hand side? No, what was it? What's the other one? Jane. 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 She worked with me at the library. She, yeah. Is she it Mary Jane? Jane? Oh, Susan Jane. Oh, Susan Jane. Susan Jane. Jane. Okay. So that it, if right. we put it in and we save it, it'll save onto it, but, but you it can't. does not. Not on a new, a new one, we have to type it in again. Each time? Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. play around with that setting. I'm not sure. I always just type it in each time. Um, but I'll play around with it, and I'll get back to you. Oh, oh thank you. Of course. So now I'm going to go and show you the preview. So this is what my title page looks like. Make note that at the top of the first page is the word running head, followed by the title of my paper. Is this actually touch screen? Cool. So, first page has all the title information that I put in. Just kidding. <clears throat> and then the second page is where the paper would be written, but we haven't written the paper yet. And another common thing people forget to include in APA is on the first page, you need to have the paper written, the paper title written again, just like this right here. And then the first page, like I showed you, had running head and then the title. And every page thereafter just has the title on the top left. Okay? I always tell students that this is a great and helpful resource, but it only has the information that you provide it. So if you forget to put Goodwin College or you forget to put the course name, it doesn't automatically know that information you need to provide it. Okay? So people will say, oh, I got this wrong. Well, you know, you need to make sure you give it the correct information so that it can format it for you. Now, let me show you how you add references. So this is the body of the paper. This is where you would write your paper. I like to tell students to scroll down and go to the add new reference right here. You're going to click on that. You can attempt to search through the resources that APA Style Central has saved. So you can try doing it that way and look to see if your, your, the title of the book or article is in their database already. I find that most students aren't so lucky and that they need to do it by hand, but that's okay. You can also add references that you've already created. So if you're doing a paper on a particular topic and you use references, the next paper you write, it's a similar topic, or down the road, you can always reuse references. So that's nice. It saves them all for you. But many times what students will have to do is go right here in blue where it says create reference. Okay. So at this point, you need to pick the proper template to fill out. It's important that you choose the right one because if you choose the wrong one, then it's not going to prompt you and ask you the proper questions that you need to fill out to get the citation. So a lot of times students are using journals, so I'll show you how to do that one. So under periodicals, you're going to click journal title. Now you just need to fill in the required field. What I like about using APA Style Central over other products, such as EasyBib or Citation Machine or RefWorks, I like that it gives you examples. So for example, for the author's author, it says last name. And then here it says initials, and it shows you what some initials would look like. The thing about APA Style is important that you do author's last name and first initial. That's another common error we see, people typing out the full first name of the author, but you only really need the initial. So you would fill that in. Year of publication. And then you would put in the title of your paper. Over here, let me type out an example for you. Over here it says format and sentence case. Does anybody know what that means? Uh -uh. Anybody know what sentence case means? That's okay, I will show you an example. Um, 
So this is the title of the publication manual for APA. So what do you guys think? Does this look correct? Well, I saw somebody shake their head. Why did you shake your head? Yes? Uh, I don't know. It's probably like, it doesn't offer enough information. OK. Well, that is the title. But um, the thing about APA formatting is your titles need to be written in what's called sentence case. What that mean? What that simply means is you're going to write your titles how you would write a sentence. First word capital, every word thereafter lowercase. Okay? So first word capital, every one thereafter lowercase. Except for proper nouns. So like a city would be capitalized, a name would be capitalized. But what's nice about APA Style Central, so I typed this in wrong, right? Sorry, I already had done this one. Okay, so publication manual. Notice that the publication, the P for publication is capitalized, and the manual, the M for manual is lowercase. Okay? But what's nice is, is they prompt you, so you click that, and then it fixes it for you. Because sentence case, People are, you know, they forget about that. Or it's kind of confusing. So it's nice that it does that for you. And then from here, you would put in the journal information, volume, issue, page number. If you're using the library's resources, all of that information would be on the title, the, on the cover <coughs> page with the abstract of the paper in which you're reading. If there's a DOI, which is a digital object identifier, which is basically just an ISBN number of the journal of online materials, you would click on that. But if not, the URL is fine. So that's how you would fill it out from scratch. I'm just going to go and add a couple of references so I can show you what it looks like that I've already created. Go back to my paper. So I'm just going to add it in reference. So these are ones I've already created, and I'm just going to go to add to my paper. I just want to show you what it looks like. Show you the preview again. So I added these three references that I had saved in my reference folder. So last name, the year, the title, the journal, and then it's all on the third page. See how it all has the indent? Indent, that's what that's what it's supposed to look like. Does anybody have any questions so far? I know I'm kind of going fast, but I just wanted you guys to see like a big picture, this is how you'd write your paper kind of thing. Any questions? How do you give you a personal reference? Like if you're personally interviewing someone, how do you write a personal reference? So is it someone that you're interviewing personally via email or phone, something yes. like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a personal reference does not go on the reference list because there would be no way for your professor to find that information. You know, it doesn't exist on the web, or um, it's not in a book. Do you know what I'm saying? So what you would do is create an internal citation within your paper, and that's where you'd reference it. And I could send you some, when I leave, I'll write your email, and I'll send you some examples. Of course. Because that, like, the, oh, yes. Is that like a footnote, in a sense? No, it would just be an internal citation that you'd write within your paper. And I'm going to show you how to do a text citation on here in one second. Did you have a question, too? Uh, no, yeah, I was interested in that. Oh, great. Absolutely. Um, anybody who's interested will just write down their email, and I'll gladly send you an example. So 
We talked about in-text citations, right? You just mentioned it. Um, who here is pretty confident you know, using in-text citations? Using it this way, yeah. Oh, on APA Style yeah. Central? Look at you. Excellent. So, it, it really does do it for you. I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through and do an example just so you can see. So, let me just start typing. This is an example. It's not typing. Sorry. There you go. My brain goes too fast, the keyboard lags behind. Um, so, say you're writing your paper. How I recommend that you do this is while you're researching, add your references as you go. Two reasons. Um, if you, for example, if you're on a website and you're, you want to cite this website and you print the page off, going back later to find, to find that information again can be tricky. You don't know how often people come to the library and they're like, oh, I was on this website and it was purple and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So doing it when you have the information right in front of you is just so much easier. And also, if you add your references and start writing, doing the in-text citation is so much easier because as you're doing the research and writing, you can be like, you can add your citation right away. Um, and everyone's process is a little different. I just recommend that just for, just for e ease. Um, some people will make notes as they're writing, but it's a pain if you've written a five to 10 page paper and you have to remember, oh, that's where I got this information. That's where I talked about it in my paper. You know what I'm saying? It's just easier to do it as you go. But say, this is I'm writing, and I want to cite this particular source down here. I'm going to scroll down. Here's the paper. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to hit cite right here. It asks you two questions. Is it parenthetical? Parenthetical refers to the work cited in parentheses at the end of your sentence. So for example, autonomy and personal growth are linked to psychological well-being. I want you to make note, it includes the author's last names, Riff and Keys, and also the date. The second example is narrative. Narrative refers to the work cited as a part of the main sentence. So for example, Riffing Keys, 1995, that found that autonomy and personal growth are linked to psychological well-being. As you can see, both had the same information, right? They both have author and the date of publication. It just depends on how you're writing. Are you incorporating the author? If so, it's a narrative. If you're citing it at the end and you're just talking about the information presented by the author, then it would appear at the end. It all depends on your writing style and the particular sentence. You just want to make sure you pay attention um, so that it flows correctly. And if you talk about the author, if you talk about the author within your sentence, you don't need to repeat the author's information because you've already told the reader you know, where you're getting the information from. So it asks those two, sen those, those two questions. And then is it a quotation? If you say yes, you need to include the page number. And if it does not have page numbers, the paragraph number. And it gives you an example of, so you'll see, let me just do one, so I'm going to do 10, I'm going to do page 10, and then I'm going to hit submit. Author, date, P, which stands for page, P, period, and then the page number. If you were to choose paragraph, it would abbreviate it P-A-R-A, -A, period. So that is an example of a parenthetical citation that is a quote. So if you're directly quoting someone, that is what it would appear in your paper. But it's in, like I said, it's just important to know that information. AP Style Central is great because it provides examples of everything that you do. 
the references I showed you, it showed the author's last name and examples of initials. It showed you examples of narr narrative versus parenthetical. So it's important, especially when you're at the beginning, to read through everything. Because it does provide nice examples or ask us, you know, come to the library. Like I said, do this for the first time with us helping you. Just so that when you go and do it on your own, you have the ability, you know, you know what you're doing. Okay. Down here at the bottom, you see how it marked it here, green, it says cited. It's important that if you talk about, if you include a reference, in your reference list, it's important that you incorporate the reference into your paper. So it, at, it gives you the information down here, it says cited. Over here on the left, it says check, Oops. it says check, and then check references. What this is going to do, it's going to go through your paper and tell you if you referenced all of your references on in your reference list. You think, oh, you know, once you get into your papers, you're going to write five to ten page papers with, you know, ten to fifteen references, you're going to lose track of what you've talked about. Right here I've written one sentence, obviously, and I have three references, so it's easy to keep track of that information, but once you get into those in-depth research papers, it's easy to lose track of what you've talked about and what you still have left to talk about within your paper. So that's a helpful tool for you. Once you've finished your paper here, on the left hand side you're going to go to export. You have two options. You can email it to, your, email it to yourself. I like to email myself everything so I have extra copies of it because I just like to do that, but you can go to download and then download it to Microsoft Word. You're going to want to download it to Word so that you can either print it out or you can submit it on Blackboard to your professor. Oh, pop up Blackboard. What's nice about this is when you've completed it. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> of course it did that. There we go. Sorry. I was like, whoa, never seen that do that before. Now you have a nice, clean looking paper. And all, all the formatting that you did in APA Style Central will download nicely to Word. And then you can, like I said, at this point, print it, you can email it, you can do whatever you'd like. So this is my paper, and here is my reference list. Does anybody have any questions for me as of right now? I definitely recommend holding on to the references list, you know, with all the references. But one thing, that, especially if you're in the beginning part of you know, classes here, there will be things coming down the line, you're like, oh, I read something one time, I'm trying to remember what it is. Having this saved somewhere, you always have a immediate resource in the library of things you've read and articles you can go back to for citation. So it's good to start building that stuff up now, because especially if you're senior capstones and stuff like that, where you need a lot of references to back up your information, that's going to be a great storehouse for you. Absolutely. And what's nice is everything is saved on, on here like a cloud. It saves all of your references. And it also saves all of your papers, which is nice, because you'll have one spot where everything you've ever written, or at, after this point you've ever written, will be saved for you. So, you know, you lose your flash drive, oh, what a bummer, but at least here you'll have it, and it saves everything. Is it possible, if you start writing a paper separately from mm -hmm. on, my, on Word, mm -hmm. to transpose it on? No. Unfortunately, like I said, it, the formatting, it, it takes it from Word and it doesn't quite apply it correctly. If you've started a paper, what I would recommend you to do is go on APA Style Central, make a title page, and add your references. Because what that'll do is it'll save all the key formatting components. You know, it'll have your running head. It'll have your um, title page formatted correctly. It'll have your page numbers. It'll have all of the key components and then you could download it to Microsoft Word and copy and paste the old document 
to the new document that has all the form the formatting correct. Because I always format my paper before I start writing the paper itself. So it's already formatted. I've already got my reference mm -hmm. page set up. Okay. With, so it, this sounds good because it would at least check to make certain I'm not I'm not um, plagiarizing somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what we like about this resource is it's designed so that you don't have to be stressed about APA formatting as much. We want the students to be able to focus on the content of their paper and not <coughs> be so worried about, oh, is my, are my margins correct? Did I do my running head correctly? You know, we want you to be focused on what you're writing about and not necessarily worrying about the nitpicky things of the APA formatting. Like citation. Like citation and things like that, that we know you guys are stressed about. So we hope that this resource will make that easier for you. I do want to show you. We have a link that's off of the library's main page that says, you need help using APA Style Essentials, start here. This is a research starter that the library staff has made. It walks you through all the different steps of the APA Style Central process. Oops. So here are videos that walk you through how to create an account if you haven't created one. The brochure I handed out to you also has steps, has the same steps over here written on the left. And also, oops. Sorry. It also walks you through the steps of writing a paper in APA Style Central. There's a video here. And then there's also written instructions over on the left hand side for you as well. The library is open seven days a week. Um, we do have a chat feature. Which one of your classmates? Oh, she left, but she said that she has used before. So here are our hours. Over here on the right, this is the chat feature. And you can chat with us the hours that the library is open. If we're not open, you can leave a message and we'll respond back to you within you know, the next business day. And like I said, I will leave my email, I'll write it over there on the board. So if you guys want to come in, I'll walk you through creating an account. You can you know, do the title page. I can help you add references for the first time. Um, so any more questions? APA style does not have to be scary, I promise you. Um, and also, if you choose not to use APA Style Central, uh, the library also has other resources. We have the APA Style Manual Guide. We have several copies that you can come and use at the library. We can walk you through the Microsoft Word, the APA formatting on there. Um, and also, I will show you some, you know, if you ever want to come. We have additional materials on the website that you can use for formatting an APA. Okay? Thank you guys very much. Thank you. You're good. You're recording, sir. Big things that when it comes to APA and citations is one thing we're noticing a lot is when you're writing your, your work, you want to support it. Put the thought about before. Good professors are the best professors, opinion or fact. Opinion. Right. Now, when you turn around and say based on research and based on data, good professors are highly rated by their students. Okay. Right. So the thing is, though, someone if someone looks at it, they're going to look at it and go, how do you know? So for instance, now Cliff and I did a whole bunch of research and did a whole study and we read a journal article where we did all the research with all the students and we came out and said 78% of the students at Billing College love their faculty. That's going to say, you know, faculty are more the students. What you would write then is, according to Thurmer and Walter, 2017, 
but when students love their faculty. That's because at that point, you want to support it. Because anytime you put in there there's an opinion or a statement in there, and someone's going to say, well, how do you know that, or back it up, you want to show the research and how you do that. So you want to say Thurman and Walter, 2017, because what we're going to do then is we're reading your paper, we see Thurman and Walter, we're actually going to go to your reference list and look for that information. That tells us to read the journal article, and then when we read the journal article, okay, because it's going to tell us that when we read it, all right, is that the real article that connects that information, or we're doing really delving into back, your background research, saying, well, this has no real connection to your research and what you're doing, why did you use this article, or you know, expand on this more, maybe you misinterpreted the research. So from now on, last name married to the year. Always remember that. Last name married to the year. Don't worry about the first name. Don't write it in a sentence. Or initials. Don't, I get initials too, like Walter M. To the, just write Walter. Don't worry about the name of the article. That's all going to be in your references. All you have to do is reference last name. In, so would you say you'd like this, Walter? So whatever my sentence is, so it's it's Walter 2017 was inspired by or whatever the art piece is. If we want to know what the, what article this came out of, we go to the references and find Walter 2017. It's just that simple. And then you're covered knowing the fact that you know we're reading it, so we know it's not your idea. We understand that you're grabbing for something else that covers the plagiarism aspect because part of the student you know integrity uh, policy here is we can't plagiarize. So this is showing us that. Looked at other people's work, you've done your research, and you're using their idea and their information. Here's the other thing. Chances are you are not creating new knowledge. You're not creating, you're not doing research, you're not doing surveys, you're not doing those pieces. You are, you have an idea, and you're seeing who else has that idea, all right, who, what's similar. If you cut and paste from anything, it ain't yours. You have to cite it in a quote. If you're taking an idea, if you read an article, right? You read an article, you find it really interesting. You know, um, atomic absorption on Mars. I don't know anything about that. But I've read an article, so now I can talk to you about atomic absorption at Mars, all right? I can't then go and write that down and claim that. Because I don't, still don't know anything original about atomic absorption on Mars. So I don't even know what that is. I just made it up. Right? So what I want to be able to do is say, I read an article in Scientific America on this by so-and-so, and then I'm going to cite it without quotes. That Dr. Joe Science Dude in 2017 talked about this, and I'm paraphrasing it. When we talk about paraphrasing, think of it this way. Cliff, I just read, read this cool article on atomic absorption on Mars, and this is what it was about. And then tell me what you know. That's, para that's the best way to figure out paraphrasing, and now it's coming in your words because you're explaining it back. One thing I'm, we're noticing a lot of papers, especially the fact that I've talked about, um, you see some feedback from previous faculty to state that you're quoting too much or too many direct quotes. The best part about paraphrasing is because you're taking someone else's information and putting it in your own words. By doing that, you're telling me you understand what they're doing. By just putting direct quote, direct quote, direct quote, great. You read something, you copied and pasted, and you just gave it right back to me. By putting in your own words and then citing it, you're telling me you read it, but you understand it. And by putting in your own words, you're you know, you're showing me you comprehend what's putting in and tw tweaking it into your own paper. So when you write, dire uh, direct quotes are only good, you know, really good for when you really want to emphasize a specific point saying, this is exactly what they say, and this, I can't say it any better than this person. The rest of it should be put in your own words because that shows me that you understand what you're doing. So when you're writing, only use direct quotes when you really want to hit that point home. Like if you're doing, a, you know, if you're quoting from the JFP and one of these monumental speeches, you want to be a direct quote, but everything else leading up to that point, 
paraphrase. Just a suggestion from experience, if you do cut and paste, make certain it's in 12 font format. The cut and paste, if you have to take something from someone and put it in, like if you copy and paste it, yep. you have to make certain it's in 12 font yeah. format. Too. Everything. Every That's paper one thing that you that write you, yeah. from here on out should be formatted with one inch margins all the way around, always 12 point font, preferably it's New Times Roman is what the standard is. And that's not the default for words, so make it's, sure that... Yeah, so, and page numbers, top right corner. If you use the formatting on Blackboard, it should do it for you automatically. But page numbers don't go on the bottom, they don't go on the middle, they don't go on the top and the middle, they go on the right. And then a running header, as they explained, it's a good idea to have on there so that you identify your paper. If I'm going to tell you something. If your paper even looks good to start, the professor's already happy. They don't need a glass of wine to read your paper at this point. They're happy because they said, well, you took the time to at least format it. I like that. All right? Um, so it says, okay, if this person was thoughtful enough to format this correctly, maybe there's some more in here. I'm just giving you a little insight as to what a lot of professors think, including me. I'm, I just, I kick my heels off. When I see complete sentences, when I see proper paragraphing, I'm giving you an insight. You are changing the attitude of your professor on how they're looking at the paper. All right? We're not going, oh. If none of this is formatted right and it looks terrible, what are we assuming? You didn't take the time. And the content, although the content may be great, you may have a great idea, we're already, we, we, you've already put us off by the format. I'm just sharing that thought with you. We're very biased at this point walking into it. Well, you know, I mean, I mean we're, I'm just being honest. And we're looking at this, and now what you want to do is you want to put your best foot forward and say, so, hey, professor, I took the time to do this part right. I'm, I have a different attitude about how I'm going to read this because now I'm not reading this. When I get a paper, the first thing I have to do if it's messed up and formatted, I have to go through and do all the technical grading first on that. And that takes a lot of time for me to do. And now I'm in a bad attitude, so now I'm going to read your content. Do you really want that? No. no. You want to be able to say, hey, look, I, I put all this together. You want Cliff to be happy when he's reading your paper. <laughs> There are students who I will get a paper and I will go, oh, this is going to be good. Because they have that reputation that, you know, it comes that way. I'm just sharing some insights with you, you know. I'm not saying all professors are like that. But if you get me, I'm telling you, you know, do that format first. Put that there. It, 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 it says a lot about your professionalism in your academic role. And this is, this is a job. In a lot of ways, it's a job for you, too. So um, this helps. Um, any questions about... When to use a direct quote and when to use a paraphrase. I'm not expecting you to walk out of here and be experts on it, but does that help differentiate what you need to do? Because that's what we're going to be looking for uh, in the future. If you're using a direct quote from somebody and what they're saying they quoted someone else, how do you put that? It's a quote so within a quote. In, in Thurmer's research in 2017, Maslow, he believed that Maslow. Right. Uh, you're you're going to you you would actually write that apart and then show that quote. There's a couple of ways to do that um, because then you're gonna you could simply you could simply go back to the original source. See, that's impressive to a professor when you go back to the original source because it says I not only read it in this book, but I went and read it in the original source. Now I'm impressed because you took the extra time to go to because you're going to learn more by doing that. Will you be able to tell that I went back to the original source and not uh, basically from If you're from truthfully my... citing, yes. Yeah. Okay. If you're truthfully citing, yes, I can. You're communicating to me the fact that you know if you're writing, as Mike said, you know um, Cliff Thurmer in his article, you know, talked about what Mike Walter did. Now I know that you just read me. 
But if you say Mike Walter 2017, as cited I'm, by, I'm assuming, if you're honest, academic integrity, that you went back and read the original article, and, then he and that will show up. In, I'm sorry, that will show up in your references. And then you go and say um, this was further substantiated or supported by Thurmer in 2017. So it shows that hey, I read the original work, but yes, I did fact checked it, and it's still relevant to this day. So as a professor, you're like, wow, this person really did the due diligence. Because what if that person misquoted or miscited the right. original document? Mm -hmm. It's hey, in good. a textbook or something now, so it doesn't Just because it's in a textbook. Mm. If it's on Facebook, it's true. <laughs> yeah, if it's on Facebook, then it's okay. But, or if it's in Wikipedia, right? You, you, you really, if you are, your reputation is based on what you write in, in, in academics, so there's a right way to do it, and then there's a, there's a cheat way to do it, or a, a, not sure a cheat way, but a shortcut way. And what if, like, say, the chapter has an author separate from the author of the book itself. A APA will, yeah, there's a lot of books that have edited versions with chapters within it, with individual authors. Yeah. APA shows you actually how to cite that. I, how many people like the blue APA. book that Danielle showed up? How many people own that copy of that blue book, the APA manual? I have. Um, we were required for human services. Yeah. You know, we're, we were talking about that too. We, we're going to get um, copies of that for people. That, the only way to go, go every to every class source. has required it, and then they've said, no, if you already have it, you don't have to buy it again. So. No, no, you only need it once. It hasn't right. changed in several years. Eight years. Yeah, it's still the same blue cover. <laughs> what other questions on APA? Anything specific jumping out at anybody? We can talk about you know format, and we can talk about but there's just some specific thing, or like for instance, the citation question, or you know how to how to actually cite came up during the break. Someone asked us about this. Anything specific about APA that someone needs addressed, or there's a general consensus here of questions about APA that we can you know. How do we refrain from using pronouns? I have a big issue of so Doc, so Thurber 2017 stated. He feels that it is the reason for this. You want to get rid of the he and the it is mm -hmm. what you're asking. Okay. Um, you can't necessarily avoid pronouns completely. However, if you continue the author's thought into a new paragraph, use the last name again. Because we may not necessarily, if you're referring to Walter in paragraph one, and then you in paragraph two you say he, I can't guarantee that you're referring to Walter again. Okay. So if the paragraph is separated, then you, if, if there's, if it's, if the, if your reference to what Walter said in the first paragraph is also in the second paragraph, use the name again, all right, just to be on the safe side. But you shouldn't be writing so much where you're constantly referring to the author. So the use of pronouns is going to come in where people are saying, well, you know, he did this, and he did this, and he did this, and he did this. You're probably using too many words. So if, if, if you look at it right, what that piece was about, without the use of pronoun, you don't always have to refer to the author. Once you said the author's name in the paragraph, then just, then just describe the material, okay? It's not like writing a letter or, you know, it, it, you just you don't need the pronouns repetitively. Use them where it's necessary. If you're interspersing your thought with their thought, you know that might be a little bit different. But typically, you're not going to use I. You're not going to use you. You're not going to use they. Right. Right. So, because if you are, then you know my or my. If you're referring to your own thought, um, there's a different place for that, and you would probably do that as a separate paragraph, especially if you're doing a reflection paper. There's a place for it, not interspersed in with everything else that you're doing. Um, anything else on the pronoun piece that, that you wanted to add? Um, I don't know if I got it all. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is, though, just from the experience of having the same issues, I'm, it is one of the biggest pronoun issues I have in my paper, when I write my papers and my uh, advisor thing. My lovely advisor that I love. From Mars. Yes. Um, he hated the word it. And it would be funny because you just write and all of a sudden he's like, There's, it is or it's. Um, you just, you really have to go through and read through your work a lot because it'll just pop up when you don't think they do. So part of the proofreading we talked about earlier is going through and making sure it's it, he or she. And also talking about when you're support, uh, supporting people's names in paragraphs, 
uh, Walter and Thurmer in 2017 go back and they said the authors say. Uh, sometimes in some paragraphs you have multiple authors being paraphrased. You can get very confused with the, uh, the reader looking going, well, which one do we see the authors? Is it Thurmer or is it Walter or is it both of them? So having that part in there, uh, we talked about before, um, when on, uh, Cliff was talking about before about um, when someone's reading their paper, he looked at your papers today without any context, the assignment, you know, who the professor is, the aspect. You have to, when you write, you have to literally lead the horse to water. You have to have to make sure that your reader understands who you're talking about. You just can't assume. Because when you assume that, that's when people start reading the wrong things or assume the wrong authors, and then that can get really messy in terms of citations. When you use it, ask yourself, what does it refer to? And then see if it's appropriate to actually write in what it means, right? So it is the napkin, right? Do, do I need to, I, there are places where it might be appropriate to say it, you know, so that you're not writing the napkin, a napkin, a napkin all the time, but you have to ask yourself, is it clear what it refers to, that's all. If I'm working and about so, a journal article, I'm working about a study that was done, and I said, it is good. The population, the study, the author's writing, it could be a whole thing. Exactly. That, you know, the population would be good, but the study was done poorly. Yeah. So by saying it, it's such a generalized aspect, you're not really narrowing it down. So where necessary, avoid the use of the it pronoun. <laughs> Other th things that you are curious about, want to know that we could just address in the few minutes that we have left. Um, Any, oh, go ahead. Go. To the page numbers, is that I had one professor that wanted the one, number one on the cover page and the other professor didn't want it. Um, I, 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 I cannot uh, comment on another professor, but it is technically incorrect to be on the first page of an APA style paper. It should be on the writing part. On the first, the first, first the introduction. Part. It's, it starts on page two. So your cover page correct. is technically page one, but nothing listed. So when you opened it up, it says page two on the first page. Okay. Yeah. That's the easy yeah. Yeah. meeting. So. There's a way to do it in Word, depending on which version of Word, so I can't say, oh, you're here. Um, but you go on to Word, there's a, a spot where you say page numbers, start at, and it will start on page two. And in APA style? Yep. It will automatically start with the number two on the cover? Well, it has nothing to do with APA style, it has to do with formatting. Yeah, okay. it's just page formatting the page. And then you just go into it and just say, When I start. download it, it will I put it yeah. again. Okay. So, so then if we do it APA formatting, and it gives you one, the first page, the cover page as one, you'll accept that still? You, if it says one on yeah. it, you get, a, you get a red mark online that says start on page two. You could go into the format of your document and change it so that the one doesn't show up on the first page. Okay. okay. We can go over that in class next week. I can show that's, you that's, that's, e that's an easy thing to fix for yourself. Okay, thank you. Or in worst okay. case, light it up. I don't, I don't even know how I get this far with so much confusion with different stuff that professors need. I have like I have like a side, one side of my brain has junk. I'll, I'll assume this professor need this. Okay, boom, you get it. This professor don't want that. It's like I'm I'm all over the place sometimes. You're, you're right, and and we actually take a special course in doctor school to torture our students that way. It's working. It's, I, you know, and and, and 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 I have to say, you know, I I hear you because professors can be different and they have different expectations. We are actually trying to make sure that we are norming ourselves to all be doing the same thing. What? Because we expect you to do it right, we should be asking you to do it right. I'm, I'm trying to score on my my final paper. Honestly, if I get it the right way, you know, consider I've been here for a while. But if I get my final paper, because it's gonna be next year, gonna be my last year. I'm like in my senior year now. But if I get this one paper right for somebody who I'm not looking at. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a tough I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dr. Timmer, a couple of questions that have come up in other classes and, and during the breaks as well too is if I'm citing something a direct quote, how do I how do I format a direct quote on the paper? And if it, for instance, it's not in a book or a journal article, but on a website, how do you well, direct quote that? Well, you have to go because there are, there's, there's page numbers um, on the website is what's supposed to happen, and you have to know what that page is. The APA manual actually shows you exactly how to cite for a website 
as opposed to a book, as opposed to a journal, um, and, and it's knowing that particular formatting piece. But you're not going to find page numbers on a website. Uh, you're going to find, well, I'm sorry, you're not, it's not going to necessarily tell you page numbers. You're going to have to find the site. You're going to have to find the uh, URL number. You're going to have to provide that. And you have to count well. the paragraph as well, too. And, and, the and the paragraph. You know, the paragraph takes the place of the page number uh, when you're on a website. And, uh, and that could be a bit challenging, especially if they have a lengthy document or a lengthy website, which is why website designers, we try not to have long pages of things. You know, it's, it's supposed to be chunked up a little bit. Um, is that what you were referring yeah, to? Yeah, can you give an example of what it looks like when writing, like for instance, um, if I'm direct quoting something and then I need a page number, because I know that... Oh, I, I'd have to look at the manual for that. Okay. Doesn't give me direct quote. I'm good, I'm not that good. <laughs> you do that, I, I, I can't, you do it all the time. You just got through APA help. Only 194 pages. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I use my APA manual today. I still don't, you know, I don't commit all of that to memory. I look it up. I, I'm, I'm of the Einstein theory. I don't remember anything I can look up. <laughs> so, but, and that's why, you get, that's why you have that reference all the time. And then, if you know this, Mike, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Dr. Walker. Do you know Mike? Oh, you're website, talking. Right? This is Citing this is website. this is citing a web website within the text of your paper. So, for instance, if you do a direct quote and saying, according to Walter, 2016, have the direct quote, and at the end would be the page number saying this did that case. So, if I wanted to, oh, that, well, and that's the, well, that's the same thing in a, in a regular paper. It doesn't have to be a website. Right, and for if it's a website, for that would be you would actually have a P it would be para, and then the, the number. So that way, I would know it's paragraph. 89 yes. so that way I look through and then I read it and say okay it's paragraph 32 so if I wanted to I will go to wherever website it is look it up and come one two three four five number 32 yep that is the exact direct quote so I know that you actually did the thing you didn't randomly slap a citation or something okay you just went really fast <laughs> who can explain what he just said who's great <laughs> who, who can explain what he just said uh, for the book you're for, the page, book. for the book, yep. for the website, you're going to put para. Yep. Thirty-three. Then he's going to go to the website and count. Yep. Well, ideally, well, hopefully, you don't you don't you don't you don't <laughs> okay. So you see the difference? It's the same formatting. You're going to you're going to do a direct quote in parentheses or in quotation marks, and then put the page number or the paragraph number. Now we're going to throw one little piece at you. How many words can you put in a quote like that? I thought it was before you have to indent, where it's required to indent, you, you, you cannot exceed three, two or three lines. Twenty words? Four. It's four lines. Oh, it's four? Forty words? Forty. 40 words is the magic number. For in paragraph no. citation? 40 words is the, is the number. If you are using a quote that is 40 words or more, then okay. you need to indent that quote separately. So here's the margin out here. This is where your words are. You have to indent that quote, and then it's done in a block format. Hmm. As a new paragraph? As it, as it, it stands alone. It's oh, in the middle. Okay. It, it could be in the middle. Okay. And then you, gotcha. then you would go All over right. here. Right. 40 words is the magic number. If it's, if it's less than four, if it's 39 words, you can actually write it this way. You hit 40 words, it's a block. Okay. The block I understand. I don't like seeing a lot of those. So it better be something. It's not intended to just fill pages. Something that has significant gravity. Exactly. And you and can't say any better than that person said, or you're basing your right. entire thing around that particular block, <laughs> then you would have it in there. Other than that, you want to put it in your own words because it's telling me that you understand it. If not, yeah. it's just telling me that, oh, I copy and paste and I read something and just slapped it in there and, and I want to tell you the word. I now. love the way you said that, significant gravity. Yeah. This is really important. It's critical. So. If I may ask one thing, and thank you for clarifying, because I, you know, there are, 
in my, my training and whatnot, I may be misremembering, but um, I may have not followed instruction. But uh, um, also, when you have over 40 words, which requires the indentation on both sides, I, I believe that I was told that to make it stand out, that you can utilize a different font, but the appropriate different font. Is that um, not true? I don't. I, I think the appropriate different font is italicizing. Yeah, you're italicizing. Yeah. It's the same font, but you're italicizing it. So when it's in the block, it stands out. Okay. Same font, same 12 New Times Roman, but it's italicized to show that then that block format. I've seen it that way. Okay. But it's still the same 12 point New Times Roman, but it's just highlighted and italicized that, that section. And, and always, 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 when in doubt, go to the manual. Go to the manual. There are so many little nuances in there. You know, we, we don't even, I, we're not even going to touch things like figures and data sets and all of that stuff that goes into original research. That will make you, makes me crazy. There's a lot of detail though. We're just talking about general writing pieces. Like How many people are in the grad program right now? Couple of folks in here. All right. How many people are undergraduate planning going into the grad program at some point? Get the blue man AP manual because I'm telling you right now, just just working out in my undergraduate, my graduate, and my doctoral process. That book, like every time there's questions, like Chris said, you don't memorize everything. You need to go back and find out what exactly do I need to italicize? What exactly is where is the common place? Where exactly do I do when there's no date but an author's name? The little yeah. nuances that there really is a manual this thick that you can't memorize that helps those little small videos. How to set up a figure, how to set up a graph. By the way, um, in, in going back, because Mike was talking about the uh, quote within the paragraph, you know, for the website. Remember that w there is separate <coughs> the reference part of that. You have to be able to reference that article with the website URL. That's what I thought you were referring okay. to. But um, so you want to make sure that you save the URL for the article that you downloaded off the internet or that you can find that page. Because in a fact check, if, if a professor really wants to fact check it, they should be able to go to every single one of your, or anybody who reads your paper, should be able to go to every single one of your sources and find that source. So make sure you save the URL because I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but you found something on the internet and you don't remember the website, you can never find it again. And you don't want to be in that position. So remember to save the URL reference if you pull something off the web. And type it correctly, because I've done that during my yep. fact check of my dissertation. I had one of the slashes wrong in the URL, and the guy that. was like, this website doesn't exist. It come out with a fix a slash, but it was there. But it was one of those things that, I know I read it, I know it's there. So that, people do check it, and people, people do look into those things. Any, any others? Just a simple one. What's, um, what's the length of the, um, the paragraph? How, long, how many languages should that? Well, well, one professor say four lines, and then the other one and a half a page. I know. And, and uh, in general, um, a paragraph is roughly three to six sentences, and a sentence is <coughs> roughly 16 words or less. So it really is about what gets built around the thought, is it all connected to the same thought? And if there's a bigger thought, then it gets carried over. The best way to do that is to write it out and then sit with somebody who may have a little bit of a writing experience on that to say, does this make sense? Is there another thought here? And then create the transition. <clears throat> I cannot speak for any other department. I cannot speak specifically for my colleagues. I can only speak for myself and the guidance that we've come up with within our department is that we try hard to be consistent, but every now and then, a professor is gonna go off and do their own thing and think their own thing, and you know, at that point, you gotta get clarification from them. But generally speaking, three to six sentences for a paragraph, each sentence is no longer than 16 words, um, and it's, it is a one general thought before you go on to another paragraph. When I look at a page and I see one page and I see either one paragraph or one or two paragraphs on a full page, the first thing I'm going to start looking at is 
there's multiple thoughts in those paragraphs and they need to be broken and, up. There's, it's possible for and, that to happen. Yeah, and and there, sometimes you get a page that's, it's one paragraph. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's that rich and there's that much stuff in it. And it could be correct. So, you know, it, it, it's, you gotta remember, writing is part science, a lot of art. And it just takes time. You know, you, no one's going to, you know, I, I look, you know, I, I write all the time. I never put out the first thing that I write. I'm always going back to it. I can always go back and make it better. It's a living, breathing document. We get in our heads that I'm done, it's an assignment, it's over with. But we can always do a little bit better next time. And, and even for, for the, those of us that write a lot, it, it, it's, it's work. I mean, it's not easy to write. It is work. You work because you want to communicate that thought. And I will tell you, if English is not a first language, you are now translating that thought into another language, which is harder to do. So sometimes write in, the, I tell students, write in the language that you're first used to, and then try to translate that. It takes more work, but we have a number of international students, and that's what we have to do. There are, it, 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 for them to be able to produce a good piece of work, so. Um, Can I say something real quick? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful that a diverse uh, grouping of students can uh, push themselves to go back to college and, and try to advance. And we all come from diff different directions. But um, you know, I, I think that largely, given my professional and personal history, uh, I'm a licensed school counselor. But I mean, the, the lack of information given to students on how to do all this stuff starts much early on. So if you didn't get it, you know, one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago, um, you know, you're probably not going to remember it. If you didn't get it all, we wouldn't know it anyways. Yeah. So well, we'll um, it's it. wonderful that we can come together like this. Yeah. But imagine, in short, um, this, is, this is how I feel very strong. Imagine you need to go somewhere, you've never been there. You have a GPS, you're able to enter that destination. The GPS will tell you how to get there from point A to point B. Tell you the time it needs to get there. Imagine if you can try to transition that thought process into the classroom. You have you know, anywhere from one to five professors. They may all want different things, but, you know, and again, it was mentioned how busy everyone is, you know, trying to do all these things, go to back to school with children. If you could take that time and, and time management, and I'm guilty of, of being behind, and I think everyone, you know, if you hold your expectations of yourself high, especially if you're going back to school, we're always behind in some capacity. Uh, but if you can take the time to utilize, if a professor says, you know, come and see me with your draft. If you can find out exactly what each professor wants, that kind of fine tunes your, your final destination. And without that, you're really just ballparking it. So, you know, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's wonderful that this is available, you know, but uh, it's something that I think a lot of students don't take advantage of. It's, it's that maybe the, with the red mark, do you, the way the email went out. Do you have a lot of red marks on your paper? Um, students, I think at large, they see that and they, maybe they get embarrassed, you know, but uh, it's an opportunity for more learning. And, you know, as adults, we can, we can utilize all this extra help, but... I appreciate that thought and I'd like to let you think about this. When you see a professor, that puts a lot of red marks, green marks, pencil marks on your paper, that is actually the professor who cares about your success because they are taking the time to give you that feedback. When you don't get feedback like that, then you gotta wonder that they just you know, they just rush through this too. So don't get you know, please don't get frustrated with the professor that's being nitpicking because they care enough to give you that feedback. And, and, and I think that's kind of important. So it's a matter of perspective, you know, um, and, and coming from faculty side. So thank you for that observation. I, I, I understand people. what he's saying, yeah. and I, I, I appreciate him saying that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna admit, I, when I came, started school again, I thought I knew everything. No, I'm the type of student, I never disregard a piece of paper from what I've been in Goodwin. I keep everything. You could call me the drunk girl, I don't care. But I keep all my work because it's important to me. And my first English class, Professor McHugh, oh, I love her. I looked at her 
the first paper she gave back to me, I gave it back to her. I even have to ask her, do not use a red ink pen on my paper again. Please try to use green, it's my favorite color. <laughs> because I, no, I was literally embarrassed. But then over time it get a little better and a little better and a little better. Sometimes I fall. I'm not like the APA stuff I'm getting into because we do MLA before and I was like so used to doing MLA I could do it in my sleep. But then, as I said, every professor needs something different. It kind of confused me, but I'm still trying. I'm still trying to apply what I've learned from before. I even go back to some of my old papers and look at it and say, you know what, I can't do this anymore, I can't do that. And that's how I'm trying to get better, but I still get red marks, especially from him. <laughs> it's actually green and purple, I don't use red. <laughs> it's, it's a challenge to you, you know, for students to see it as a door opening, right. you know, for opportunity. Yeah. To be, become more aware, to to you know see it as a challenge for us to rise to the next level as a student, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, I I mention it because it's a fact. You know, students are like, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible student, and it's trying to to kind of get past that and build a better relationship with with the between the student and the and the learner. I was terrible then. I'm I mean, the teacher. Now. <laughs> I, I, I want to be mindful, I, uh, we, we, we did go over a couple of minutes here, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, uh, for, for me, personally, um, I learned a lot from you about what we need to do better, we meaning myself and my faculty, to serve you better, so I appreciate that feedback. I hope that this was worth your time, um, that you're getting nuggets out of this. What really, what, what I realized this morning is, um, uh, I would have loved to have had more professors if we do this again. We, this is the second year that we've done this, it, um, as far as uh, having review of papers. Did we do that last year? Uh, yeah, we did ago? it last year. The, um, I, I would like to be able to get you feedback more timely like that, um, because it really works. We would just need to have more staff to sit with you. And that's why we, would, we said we'll send you an email. We will invite you to meet with us as a coach not a necessarily professor. If you want to take advantage of it, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, but we do want you to be successful. You, you know, you're a reflection of the college and us, and we want you to be the best version of yourself. So that's our commitment uh, to you. So make us work. Don't, we got such an easy job. Make us work. Um, on Monday, you'll be getting a survey out from SurveyMonkey. Uh, it's going to come out through Anne Marie, <coughs> through the same distribution list. All the updates were about this. Please fill this out because it gives us information of things you want us to, you know, things we did tackle, things we didn't, we, we didn't address, you want to address, or things you want us to emphasize some more. So when we do this again, you know what to do. And, and like Cliff said, we can able to address this better in classrooms and in the faculty as well too. And, and if there's other things that we'll add, so yeah. it's can I ask a quick question about that survey? survey itself is very important. But what I noticed for anonymity, you know, like it says we will not use this, but it always asks at the end for your email and that kind of... Uh, this one won't. No, it's, no, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's coming from SurveyMonkey. It's, it's our own. Oh, okay. So it's I just always want, I had one the other day. I'm like, oh, you yeah, know, sometimes they do that. We're not... We're not uh, it's going to be completely anonymous. We, don't, it's we, don't, we don't have any feelings, so we don't hold anything against you. <laughs> Except when you use red pen. It just makes you want to hold back the hard truth, you know? Let us have it. <laughs> Let us have it. One, just, we're, we're, um, we're, we're all professionals. We're big boys and girls. We can handle it. When can we expect the emails with the feedback on those of us that joined in? Uh, I was actually in my office trying to uh, send that out on the break, and so, uh, but the problem was I couldn't get everybody's email, so I got to look up everybody's email. Um, so it'll probably come out Monday. We'll send emails to the to the students, um, and then you can uh, uh, reply if you're so inclined. All right. So Monday, Monday. Yep. We will. We will. By the end of the day, business day Monday. Um, our commitment is to get it out. Otherwise, Mike will buy you all lunch. Oh. All right. Off a of Cliff's uh, P card for the department. <laughs> <laughs> one, one last quick question. Yeah, oh, that's our commitment.